What's up everybody? It's your boy Justin with Herbal Lifestyle. Today I'm in a beautiful yard out here in uh, Cape Creek, Arizona, where we are installing a food forest. We are going to be using, um, let's see. We're going to be using all the land from behind this barn, all of this land in front of the barn, all the way down about 160 feet that way it's gonna be a pretty big project it's gonna include eight valves um, and after we're done installing this irrigation system we're going to be then laying down mulch compost uh, planting a lot of trees shrubs ground covers vines you name it we're gonna get it all grown in this lush space this trampoline is gonna go um, this little playground thing is gonna go Again, we're stretching all the way out that way. We have this beautiful land to work with, okay? Pretty exciting. Time to get started. I'll get back to you guys when I can. I'm gonna show you the progress as we go ahead. So as you can see right here, we have a nice, we have a water line right inside the barn area. Uh, our jackhammer's right over there. And then right about here, we're actually going to install all of our valves and then we're gonna run them out and disperse them throughout the yard. And our timer is gonna go up against the house. We're gonna run wire all the way out to the valves and get this all set up. If you end up liking this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna watch more videos, don't forget to subscribe to Herbal Lifestyle. And if you have any comments you'd like to share or questions you have, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll be glad to uh, read over them, answer them, and enjoy what you have uh, to tell me. If you find this video informational, don't forget to share it with at least one person. Day two, and we have been doing a lot of trenching. Now, I don't have a second person to help me with this at the moment. So, so I've just been using the jackhammer to just go ahead and start breaking down all this dirt. We have three zones completely broken down. We're about to, we're working on the fourth and the fifth with this trench right here that keeps extending down that way. That'll be our fourth and our fifth line. And then our sixth line is actually gonna ride up against this wall all the way down that way. And with that, we have two more valves that are gonna be used for veggies and shrubs. And one of those is gonna be utilized right here. And then they're gonna be utilized underneath these two trees right here. As well as along this fence line for the chicken coop. We're gonna work on getting some vining plants to grow along the uh, chicken coop. And then again, down this line as well. Down at the very, very end of this line right here, there will be half inch perforated line because it gets real narrow and using bubblers in a narrow situation is pretty much a wasteful way of using water. So we're gonna let the water seep in slowly by using half inch line at the end where it gets real narrow. Uh, again, we have eight valves in total, six going towards trees, two going towards veggies and shrubs. This is a pretty decent sized project. Over there we, where the trampoline is will be a future pond and in the front yard we'll have a fountain feature. Uh, right now, it's all about irrigation. As soon as we're done with this, we're gonna start planting citrus in here. Also getting a lot of mulch in, and also bringing in a lot of organic material for the uh, citrus and the future trees I'll be planted. All right, I gotta keep getting back to work. All right, so we're gonna be plugging in the timer to this outlet right here. The timer's gonna be posted up somewhere right about there. And then I'm gonna run it's electrical cable in this mini trench. Very long. Do the wash. I'm gonna put a little sleeve right here. Just some PVC, three quarter inch, nothing crazy. And then right here is where the sixth line ends, the sixth valve. There'll be a bubbler at that end. Be a bubbler right here. What's up everybody? It's day three. We got the holes already broken down from day two, and now we're just digging them out. I actually dislocated my shoulder about four days ago and couldn't do this job for a little while, so I had to come back to it. 
Um, but yeah, four days ago, dislocated my shoulder and I'm getting it done today. Let's get this shit done. Wow. All right. I gotta keep working. Get back to you. All right. Now it looks like I have some brand new employees helping me out. You can see they're uh, moving the gravel slowly over, getting it, getting my trench dug out for me. I appreciate you guys. You know, I'll pay you aphids and whatever else I can give you. But yeah, uh, we've been digging out. This whole area is all done. And now we're gonna start working out this trench. Then we got this little one. We got the one furthest out. And we have one back there, a few different directions. And after that, we get to start laying in some pipe. So exciting. Can't wait. Beautiful yard. It's gonna be even more beautiful when it's filled with tropical fruit trees, deciduous fruit trees, uh, different types of beneficial uh, plants to promote uh, different kinds of pollinators and butterflies and hummingbirds. This is really going to be one beautiful, beautiful location. All right, so we have two trenches dug. Over here you can see these are gonna open up a lot of water flow for the uh, trees that we're gonna be putting in. We've agreed to about 50 trees, close to 100 plants in total, or a little over 100. Um, you can see we're starting to run the uh, electrical cable for the valves. Here's the little wash. We uh, reinforce the line with PVC. Come up here. See a beautiful doggy. Beautiful doggy. And then uh, right up here, again, we're gonna mount the irrigation system. The irrigation system will be plugged right into that outlet right there. beautiful project it's been fun although it's been very fun and I've been enjoying this day and I've been rehabilitating this shoulder while doing it it's time to go we dug out quite a bit and uh, we got a little bit more to dig out tomorrow and when it cools down we'll probably install the actual timer and hook up the rest of the electrical cable possibly We'll install it to the valves. Probably not, because I'd rather do that in the shade. And uh, we're getting very close to being done with this project. Once these holes are dug, the pipe goes in pretty fast. So I'll get back to you guys when the pipe's in the ground, and then we can go over what we went ahead and installed. This is gonna be a very lovely project. I'm super excited. Cannot wait to see what this is like in the next five years and then the next 10 years. This is going to be a very epic yard. So uh, follow me along and uh, see you tomorrow. All right, now we're wrapping up day four. Four? I believe it's day four. We are wrapping up day four. It's been a long day. Uh, got all the holes trenched and got one line completed. And we're working on the second. We'll have six more to go after that. We're gonna start moving a lot faster now, which is great because uh, the hole's already dug. However, we do have a little bit of doggy activity. A little bit of, let's see, a little bit of doggy activity. And that's, uh, that's gonna have to be re-dug out. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just give you guys a quick clip of what's been done. And then you will see me tomorrow with some more, more footage. All right. All right, so it looks like we have two lines welded in three we're getting started on and we are currently working on the second so the second one starts here we got one two and then we have more t's 
We have more teas at the office. So we're gonna get, you know, some more teas. Um, that's for all this stuff down here. Uh, it looks like I just forgot to bring the bags of teas. Anyway, this is gonna be the second valve line. It's gonna kind of circle around there. And then over here, we got our first one done. You can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll have nine flooding heads installed here. Right now we just got the risers in. Uh, we did a water pressure test. Looks like it's okay. Um, once all the heads are in, I'm sure I'll, I'll see a better result. It's just, um, does, I'm not sure they get a lot of water pressure out of out of uh, these lines out of their main water line but we're working on it so it's all gonna get done huge project all right and I'll see you guys tomorrow all right so we went ahead and finished installing the entire irrigation system uh, this is day six sorry for day five not being on video there was a lot going on a lot of work being done I'll go ahead and show you the timer and then talk about a few things that happened and uh, it's, it's looking great. We got, a, we got a whole lot of irrigation going on. So right over here, you can see there's a half inch perforated line looping around. This is gonna cover a lot of shrubs and uh, you know plants that need water more frequently. And then right next to it's a bubbler and there's a bubbler next to orange. And then there's some bubblers kind of all throughout the area. And over here is the timer. You now it's all set up. I don't really need to go into all that right now. But it's all done. Plugs right into there. You're gonna need to get some kind of cap to seal that, cover it. But it's looking real beautiful around here. So we have flood bubbler galore. I mean, let me kind of just stop for a second. So there's a total of like 51 bubblers uh, between six valves. And they're all set up. And normally I would show you them running. Un unfortunately, where I'm getting my water source from, there's not enough pressure, not enough flow for me to uh, get what I'm looking for. So we already got a solution for that. We're gonna fix it. Here's one of those half inch perforated gardens. I really like using this line to create garden beds. You can wave it in any direction you need to. Right over here is gonna be their main garden bed. This is where they're gonna get most of their crop from. As you can see, it's full sun directed on it. It's gonna be a perfect area to grow. We like to keep, we always like to think that a gardener is gonna plant, you know, within the lines. But then you still want somewhere to walk, don't you? You know, you don't wanna be stepping all over your plants. So it's always good to leave some kind of like foot spacing between your plants and everything. So you can make sure you do this right. Some places here are tighter than others, but you get the point. Okay, and we got a row of bubblers. This is all gonna be fruit trees down this line. It's gonna be incredible. Um, fruit trees or edible fruit trees or uh, moringas or, you know, whatever we can get in there. Back here. Back here is gonna be all a deciduous field. It's gonna be a really beautiful crop grower right there. We're gonna grow a lot of peaches, apricots, nectarines, uh, possibly plums, and for sure uh, a mulberry tree back there. If not back there, we're gonna leave the mulberries out of this whole section and we're gonna get mulberries up in the front. We might, might do some pomegranate back here and mulberries up in the front. This is gonna be a really beautiful garden when it's all said and done. Just imagine this whole area back here, bananas and mangoes and 
different types of tropical shrubs like Suriname cherries or Cherry Rio Grande, you know, things from the Eugenia family. Uh, we're gonna get Patanga tuba in, in here, uh, star fruit, you know, all different kinds of trees and fruits and edible shrubs all within this area. But first we're gonna have a line of mulberries and moringas giving us shade. I mean, there's gonna be a whole lot of action going on. And also, right back over here, we have it stubbed out so that we can add a half inch perforated line inside of the chicken coop. Right now, there is not one. We ran out of half inch perforated line. We had 500 feet to work with. We're gonna need another 500 to probably finish up what we need to do within this yard. Um, so other than that, it's all done. It's looking beautiful. Can't wait for right here to be a, a lovely koi pond for them to enjoy and listen to the sounds of. But right now we're at a point where uh, there's not much we can do until we get this plumbing fixed. So right over here, we have two valve boxes. Okay. This one holds five valves, probably be better with four but we, we crammed five into there. And right here we have three valves. We have the ability of adding two more probably in there. And then if we need to, we can add two more anywhere else. I have a feeling one day we're gonna put a valve in here to do something in this chicken coop. Other than that, I think this is gonna be pretty stationary where it's at. We'll probably actually connect this whole system by running the main line somewhere around here and actually connecting into there, leaving this untapped. So, uh, also, what I like to do with these, I like to break off these bottom pieces just so you don't have to actually like try so hard to close these and open them. <laughs> I don't think that's necessary, you know. These aren't, um, they're not in the in the city or something where somebody's going to try to mess with them where you actually need to lock them and stuff. This is in somebody's backyard. So you could break those little tips off. And as you can see, we have that 710 line running right through and then we have... A little cap on the end because we're gonna eventually uh, when we come back here we're gonna do this chicken coop we just need to get some more half inch perforated line so that pipe right there i need to cap it off right there where that 90 is it's gonna be a t and then a 90 and then that's gonna go all the way down so and then somehow through here, gotta be foot deeper than all these rocks so the pipe doesn't get crushed. That's always fun. Gotta, gotta trench through all this a foot deep. Keep going, keep going. And we're gonna connect here. All right, so we're back at the Cave Creek Food Forest Project. We didn't have enough water flow with the irrigation line we were running because it had too many things connected to it. So we got Kay's plumbing out here and they got it set up with a one inch line running through the garage. It uh, connects to the water heater but it's separate from the water heater. So now we're gonna run one inch PVC all the way down and connect it to our main line all the way down and then connect it to our valves. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this major trench that had to be dug. So right over here, this had to be real tricky. You have to go in just by hand, uh, no pickaxe or anything like that to about like right -ish here then you can start using a pickaxe once we got out here this was all jackhammer work we had to go down the six foot the six foot wash and you can see we trenched foot down all the way through and out too tired to walk all the way down there so my finger is going to do the action for you guys so you see where the wheelbarrow is that's where the valves are and so all this we're gonna run that one inch line down the hill and straight across this is about 200 foot stretch and 
hopefully at this point we'll, we'll have enough water pressure for these bubblers again we're running about eight bubblers per valve there's some bubblers that have nine and i believe even one has ten uh, so here it is now it's time to get this pvc in the ground get hooked up to that line we have a vacuum pressure breaker for that line that we're going to install all right so in here again we have one two three and now we have our main line which is a one inch line that's running in to all of this it's very tight in here this was a unexpected change we capped it off from the pre-existing line which we were catching water from right over there running it this way and now that's gone and now we begin planting our citrus. Total of 12 citrus planted in a grove, no more than six to eight feet apart. Some of them even closer together, depending on the variety and where they are located between each other. Like for instance, these three, probably no more than five to six feet apart. However, you have this Ponderosa. We're gonna let it grow huge and let it grow that way. We have this kumquat right here. I believe it's a kumquat, let's just verify. That's a kumquat right there. We're gonna let this stay short. We're not gonna let it get tall. Maybe, maybe no more than then yayish, you know, about six, six to eight feet tall. And then we have your Arizona sweet. This one is gonna get massive. We're gonna let it grow out this way. And then we have this grapefruit right here. This is gonna be a ruby red. We're just gonna let this have its own large canopy, preferably growing that way. And then of course we have this Mexican lime right here, this thornless lime. This is going to give us a lot of uh, shrub shade that we're looking for this is going to be one tall shrub probably about 12 feet tall fatter than ever and it's just going to be loaded with fruit in the next five years look at this if you end up liking this video please give it a thumbs up if you want to watch more videos, don't forget to subscribe to Herbal Lifestyle. And if you found this video informational, please share with at least one friend. If you have any questions or stories you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. This is your boy Justin with Herbal Lifestyle. Live your life free and keep on growing.